Hello, I'm Melanie Hubbard and welcome to After LUTV News, where we will discuss interesting topics in news and pop culture with our panel of reporters. A year after the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas shooting, two individuals committed suicide after surviving the tragedy where 17 people were killed. Since the suicides, there has been increased activity to the Oakland Park 211 call center that connects residents to community, health, and disaster services. A facility was opened to give students, family members, and faculty a place to seek help. Panel, is there enough being done to assist survivors in the aftermath of a mass shooting? And if not, what should be done? I feel as though enough is being done, but there are certainly a lot of other measures that can be taken. I feel like um, getting a weapon is a little bit too easier for a lot of people. Um, I feel as though um, we point the blame at guns a lot of times, but you got to question the psyche of the person who's you know aiming the gun and shooting it at people. Um, there were definitely mass murders before the you know all these the rise in the weapons and so on and so forth. People didn't use weapons back in the '70s, as you we talked before. Um, they use anything that was laying around, hammer, crowbar, anything. So it, it's really a psychological thing. But with the mass shootings being used with guns, should there be more restrictions? Or it, should sh be? it should be. And I feel as though I have a military background. And once I came out of the military and I picked up a gun, I realized that it's, it's very easy to buy one. And it's a bit too easy, to be honest. I, I think it's well, less about the accessibility and more about uh, there should be done like on an educational side with guns like I think there's already a lot of I mean murders illegal you know you're not supposed to kill people I think it's more about the education behind the safety of guns and like maybe more of a mental evaluation when you're buying guns maybe you should have like some kind of like psychological test make sure you have gun safes stuff like that you know it's less about the actual weapon itself or like regardless of what it is in these mass murder cases and more about like you making sure that the pe person using it or the person buying these weapons is mentally capable of having it. Definitely. Yeah, uh, uh, but as well, but there is already regulations in the books with the NFRTR, which is the National Registry for most NFA items like machine guns, SBRs, short barrel shotguns, and any other weapons which are more oddball weapons. Uh, it, we already fill it like when you're when you do uh, the process, you do fill out what is called the ATF uh, ATF form of 4473, which is the background check, which is both done by in, co uh, in cooperation with the ATF and the FBI. So the FBI does do a check, and they do actually do uh, check your background medically of your psychological background too. But with these mass shootings, it always comes out to be when they go on trial, they're said to be mentally insane. Why couldn't we figure Stop out that they were mentally insane die. before yes. they had access to the gu these right. guns and yes. before they had access it, to I, I look at it people. at the point of most people, like, uh, when we, well, with those that commit suicide, I, the, we can agree the trigger apparently a lot of them say was because of the recent New Zealand shooting. Right. However, that shooter was completely sane. He obviously knew what he was doing. His manifesto, he written a a very long, uh, over 50 page manifesto that basically described what, why he chose guns. And he chose it for political reasons that he knew it would get the most, most attention because of that. Because he, he even had, uh, in the, if you ever watched the live stream video he, that he streamed, that I unfortunately had to see, I, I recommend no one to see that. Um, he even had like rigged explosives to gasoline cans because he was planning to blow up and set fire to the buildings. Can you honestly say that that sounds like a mentally stable person though? Like besides, you know, uh, like he's I'm sure they did some like, kind of test about it. But like he's morally bankrupt. Like look at serial killers. Like uh, they they do it for like obviously pleasure. I mean, there is they, there was supposedly a pattern. They would argue a pattern. However that pattern became a little bit skewed because they were realizing these are people that have that can look like they are part of society they're mentally sane they're like there's some of them even say i just did it because i wanted to but along with that along with all of these gun control issues and things like that how can we help the children or students who are actually survivors of these attacks and the people who were able to live through this and see that their friends have been 
um, died of these mass shootings and they actually survived and now two people have actually taken their life. They need. I, I say definitely we should definitely uh, promote uh, 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 psychiat psychiatrists, right. anything, anyone, uh, mental coaches, anyone to help them out because uh, it is a very tragic event and right. it can give you PTSD just to sure. like literally Definitely. hear another event like this happen. Yeah. I think that there's such a stigma behind mental health in the United States and other places I'm sure for, for sure. And I think that it really just boils down on both ends before the shooting, after the shooting, yeah. Yeah. doing all of it yes. is just normalizing mental health and making sure that people are taking care of each other. Cause mental health, in my opinion, and what should be everybody's opinion, which you know, you can't really say that, is that mental health is just as important as physical health. Definitely. It's very, it's very important. Right. Yeah. I, I will tell you this mind. for sure, because in the 70s and 80s, we, it was still a new thing too, psycholo uh, psychological studies, because many people, how we like in san sanitariums and stuff, including the 40s, 1940s, we treated it very terribly. Some people just said like, like mentally uh, disabled people, they, they, they just treated them like, oh, he's just insane. And the common practice was of just send them to the sanitarium and like they would mistreat them. It would be like uh, a host of very abusive, like, like it would, did not help them at all. It's just like uh, practices of pulling the teeth, electroshock therapy when they didn't need it. So like, like I said, mentally uh, disabled people, they were mistreating them constantly. So right. that actually exacerbated their uh, mental illness. But since these shootings are happening into, in the schools, should we hold, hold the schools responsible for checking on these mental health issues or should we have the parents? I it's think it both. should be a combination, yeah. for it's a sure. Yes. For sure, and I think that uh, with, with that ed education that I'm talking about, like about the, the gun, using that for gun control and all the other things, like I think that I watch um, a news story about the suicides that were happening and stuff like that. And a guy from the Parkland school, actually, he, he said um, at the beginning, he's like, you know what, all your kids are at risk. All, everybody should be watched. Everybody yes. that was involved in this should be watched. But in the same breath, he said, we don't know who to look for. We don't know what to look for. So like at the same time, you know, all these teachers and all the, like, the school staff, they all have like so many kids to watch for. So like they can of control course. it like on a more and these like, teachers, general level, but the parents can control it on like more of a personal level. So well, everybody needs to be watching these for the These teachers signs. need yeah. the mental health checks as well. I agree, because yes. Because they are there at the school yes, with them just as sure. much as the students. I mean, they, although they are not as close as them, but they do have a personal one-on-one -on -one right. relationship And they can have survival skills students. just as much as those yes, kids can, for definitely. sure. If not more, because they're responsible for them when they're there, you know? Yes. Yeah, more community involvement, definitely. Because yeah. of, yeah. It, the more you can help these kids, especially from where I'm from in Port Arthur, is not exactly the most like my. Uh, uh, I'm trying to find the term. Uh, it's not the most uh, greatest place to where you can find a lot of help sometimes, and they like community activism outside the schools try so hard to get these kids like like. Um, I know there's programs in Beaumont, like uh, they're trying to get the uh, the uh, the community center there, a little help over there uh, for a lot of uh, students. It's more just like pay attention to them, give them attention and let them know. Okay, well thank you panel. If you're thinking about suicide, worried about a friend or loved one, or would like emotional support, call the Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. The Lifeline work Network is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the United States. Thank you, panel, and thank you for tuning in to After LUTV News. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for more LUTV content. See you next time.